Today we're going to start machining on a completely customized snare drum for our good friend Dan Palovich. Now if you don't know who Dan is, he used to be the drummer for a little garage band called Panic at the Disco. I chime in with a haven't you people ever heard of? I don't know, maybe you've heard of them. Now Dan has been working for several years behind the scenes to completely revolutionize the snare drum, you know, something that hasn't been done for centuries. Dan has been 3D printing his designs over the last few years using different materials and different designs. But now he thinks he has his design finalized, so it's time to do it in metal. We got a big piece of brass that Tyson's going to get put in the SMX behind me, and we're going to start this process by doing the material prep operation, and then we're going to take you through a series of videos showing you this entire process of us making this custom snare drum. Now one of the challenges we have with this part is how are we going to hold it? So what we did is we came into SolidWorks and we created a model of our stock. And we saw that we have a little bit of space down here at the bottom. And so we're going to make use of that excess material and we're going to use some nice fixturing from Shunk. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount a pull stud to each of these holes in the bottom and then we're going to be able to clamp it in our Shunk Vero S modules. Now this work holding solution and a whole bunch of others are available on our online store at titansofcnc.com. You just go and look at all the Shunk products. But before we can get this part looking like this over in our five axis mill, we need Tyson to put our threaded holes and our counter bores in for our pole studs. So I'm gonna be taking care of all the holes for the fixturing so Jesse can hold this in the Vero S. So we're gonna face the part, we're gonna get a nice clean surface on it. So first up, I've got a turning insert, a KCU-10B CNMG-432. All I'm doing is facing the minimum amount on the front of the part and just getting a nice clean surface. I'm running it at 700 SFM with a feed rate of 3000 and we're just going straight down the part. After that, I've got a nine millimeter drill coming in. This is gonna be popping in the five holes for our threads and our counter bores. I'm going 550 thousandths deep into the part, so just past the threads. I've got a 3 8 core 5. It's starting where all of those holes that I just popped are, and it's going to helical in about 200 thousandths deep and open up those bores. I'm running it at 490 SFM, puts it at 5,000 RPM again, feed rate of 15 inches per minute, and I'm going to be doing a 5% step over. The next tool, we have our thread mill. It's an M10 by one metric fine pitch thread. We already got the holes in from our previous operations. This is just putting in the ID threads on each of those five holes. For the last tool, I chamfered both the outside of the counter bore and the inside where the threads are. And all I did was use a 2D contour pass and master cam, changed it to 2D chamfer. And for the top ones, they're 20 thousandths chamfers. I stayed 50 thousandths off the tip of the tool. And then for the bottom ones, I went a little bit deeper because they were threaded ones. So I did a 40 thousandths chamfer on them. And I wanted to make sure there was no burrs so that when you screw in the bolt for the Vero S, there's no problems with it going in. Hey, I'm interrupting this video really quick to let you guys know that there's a massive sale going on on our store right now, titansofcnc.com. You know how expensive a probe can be, and if you want a great product but don't want to pay thousands of dollars, you should go look at the Heimer 3D sensor. It's awesome, and it's on a crazy deal right now. You don't want to miss it. Okay, back to the video. Nice. That little part give you any trouble? Uh, holding it was a little scary, but we got it through. <laughs> so here's the go pin. Nice. And no go. See, now we got a problem, Ty. Uh, Barry would make this where both of these pins go. Anytime you bring a go, no go pin, all that type of stuff to Barry, he just assumes you want everything to go. So he just makes all of them just fall in. You know, so you know I, I ran this a little bit slower because we've only had this one piece, but I know the finish looks kind of good there. So I can I can yeah. chatter it if you want. Well, that is one one way that we know that Barry's not associated with this at all is that the finishes are nice and it actually has chamfers on it. Oh. So you don't cut your hands to pieces. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and get the pins installed before we take this off. We can go straight to the five axis. Oh, got, got a wrench here for you. Thank you. All right, so we only have a half inch of stock here to hold on to, which don't leave us much threads especially when we count this counter bore here for our clamping pin. So instead of going with the standard coarse pitch thread, I'm going with an M10 by one millimeter pitch, which is a fine pitch. 
in order to get a little bit more threads in here to hold on to. So that's gonna give me eight threads instead of five that I would have with a force pitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these mounted on so we can get this material over to the five axis. All right, so now all the clamping pins are installed and this material is ready to go over to the DVF 8000T. Now over there, I'm almost finished with the fixture. So this is gonna go straight onto that when I'm done. Now this is the first part in this series. So this is a material prep operation. Then we're gonna show you the fixture. And after that, we're gonna make the most epic drum that you've ever seen. And who knows, maybe even Barry will learn how to make a good finish on something. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this out of the machine. You guys, if you could do me a favor and go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, we'd really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.